السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله How's everyone going? This is Mind Heist episode 74 Ramadan Mubarak again uh, It's about halfway through Ramadan now um, I'm just out here doing a solo episode uh, Muhammad's caught up with some stuff I think and uh, so I don't want to you know, leave you empty handed <laughs> if that's a thing um, and I wanted to make an episode. Now, this episode, I think, is going to be very, very useful for you, especially since we're, we just passed, I think, halfway through Ramadan. Um, but before we get into the main topic, I just want to highlight two things for you. Um, so I haven't actually asked Muhammad about this, but I'm, I'm going to assume he's okay with it. So I'll just uh, drop a link in the description of this podcast. And basically... Um, you can help Muhammad out, basically. Um, there is some uh, situation that he's facing. May Allah make it easy for him. May Allah give him sabr and his family as well. And so you can help out there. Um, you can also help me out with something, alhamdulillah, very excited. Um, of course, I announced it in the very short episode I put out recently. Um, but yeah, if you want to uh, learn about my project, then go to my campaign page, uh, launchgood.com slash better men. Uh, there's a, there'll be a link in the description of this podcast as well. And, uh, by the way, I'm doing video as well as audio for this just by myself. Um, so I'll put it on my, on the Sarah masters YouTube channel. Um, and yes, yeah, so, uh, that campaign, it's all about me basically researching what does it mean to be a man? What are the traits of a real a Muslim man, a good, real Muslim man, um, all those things together, not just, you know, a masculine man, uh, not just a good Muslim, but all of those things put together. What does it mean? What are the traits of a good Muslim man? And what is his role in the world? What's his role in the wider world, uh, in his family? And what are the traits he needs to cultivate and develop in himself? Okay. So it's an exciting, very exciting, uh, book that I'm actually putting together. So this research, I'm turning into a book, inshallah. And uh, if you want to pre-order your copy and support me, that'll be great. Alhamdulillah, we, we smashed the target in the first couple of hours at the initial target that I had. So I'm really happy about that. I'm really kind of grateful for anyone, uh, any of you Mind Heist listeners who contributed. And you can still contribute until uh, the end of Ramadan. I think that's when I'll end the campaign. Uh, of course, last 10 days is coming up. So you might I uh, want to, you know, contribute, right? So the basically where the money will be going is to print the book. So print your copy, maybe print, you know, extra copies uh, to have available for people to buy uh, when it when it's printed. And then I need to design a really, really good book cover because I realize that's really important when it comes to books. And then uh, the promotion of the book itself. Um, and alhamdulillah, as you might know, I'm a marketer by trade. So I think I've got an upper hand, you know, so your money, your money that goes into promotion will be being used very well versus other uh, charitable causes. Unfortunately, uh, I've seen it myself, you know, firsthand how money is wasted in promotion and marketing uh, because they're just not good at marketing and they haven't bothered to try and become good at marketing. So anyway, that's launchgood.com slash better men and uh, for Muhammad's campaign or fundraiser or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'll also put a link in the description there for you because there's no easy link for me to share. So now going on to the topic uh, of this podcast, how to save your Ramadan if it's failing and how to give it a big boost if it's, you know, kind of going okay. So firstly, like why bother? Like why I know everyone like feels guilty if they don't have a great Ramadan in terms of Ibadah. I get that. Uh, but why, you know, is it just because out of social norm kind of thing that you feel bad or do you really understand the significance of Ramadan and why you should be feeling guilty or why you feel guilty? Um, so why is Ramadan a big deal? Well, there are a few reasons. I think Ramadan is like a time where you're fasting. Okay. For the whole month or most of the month you're fasting and that according to, you know, some of the experts in terms of willpower, um, willpower is like a muscle so you can develop willpower by exerting it so you go to the gym you use your muscle and at that time the muscle feels weak but then it grows back stronger 
right? Um, and it's the same with fasting. So the more you uh, exercise your self-control, restraint, then you should gain more restraint over the medium or long term. So this is a time of more self-control, okay? It's also a time of being tired, but it's a time of, of self-control. You know, you're stopping yourself eating, uh, you're stopping yourself drinking, you're stopping yourself from hopefully sleeping too, too much, um, even though you might feel like it. You're stopping yourself from perhaps eating certain foods or um, doing certain sins that you, you maybe have fallen into as a habit, and you're really working on that. So it's a time when you're kind of going a bit intensive when it comes to uh, putting effort. You know, and when it comes to Ibad as well, like I know this year, if Tarawih is not available in your local masjid, then you might be praying Tarawih at home and you might be realizing that, wow, this isn't, this isn't autopilot Ibadah. You know, this is something I have to actually put effort into reading the Quran myself and, and being conscious in the Salah rather than just following the movements of the imam. I know, you know, unfortunately, I've done that in the past where I'm tired, for example, I can't focus that, that well. And so I'm following the movements and I'm listening to the first few ayat he's reading, but then I end up daydreaming. Um, but when you're praying on your own at home, there is more of that element, element of focus, right? So that's another way that you're exerting effort, okay? So it's a time of self-control. It's a time, of course, that we focus on the purpose of living and basically making good use of our time because, I don't know, just we think about why, why are we fasting? You know, why, why do we do this thing? And you remember, Yanni, that Allah told you, Allah told you to do it and you're fasting for that reason, you know? And so then you might think broader than that, like, okay, I'm spending a lot of time in Ibadah here, like, <clears throat> for example, fasting. Why don't I fast the rest of the year at all or very little? Why is that? Is it because I'm not focused on the purpose of me existing, right? So it's a time to think about that and put emphasis, of course, on that. Not just because, I don't know, not just because it's, um, not, just, not just because uh, you're fasting, and you're constantly in a bad that's in that sense. But because it's the month of the Quran, it's the month in which the Quran was initially revealed, you will connect more with the Quran and you'll get more reminders because of that. Because the greatest reminder is the Quran, you know. So for that reason as well, you're kind of focused more on doing good, making good use of your time. Uh, when I say making good use of time, at spending time on things that will help you out when you die basically right and now if you think of Ramadan as well it's like a training so training for the rest of the year it's a time where you go intensive uh, it's a very short period of time short and intensive and it prepares you for the rest of the year so in Ramadan you've got into really good habits of reading Quran more uh, ibadah more self-restraint more self-control more and all of that and you've done that in a quite intensive way, right? You've gone from like zero to 100 uh, quickly as Ramadan came in. And then, you know, most people, they go out very quickly as well. But what, it should, what should happen is, I mean, most people, that's unfair to say it's, you know, on a day, they've forgotten everything. No, it's a process of a few weeks or a few months before a lot of us go back into our normal state but the goal in Ramadan should be never to go back to the original state even if there is just one lifestyle change that you make from Ramadan and you do that every year and that's the power of Ramadan right that's the power of Ramadan that if every Ramadan you leave it with just uh, increasing one good habit or starting one new habit then after 10 Ramadans your 10 habits up your 10 habits up and that's how I think behavior really changed and you become that's how i plan on becoming what i would call a pious person it's not through going to hajj and my life changed after hajj it's not uh you know one day i'll go and study in egypt or something it's not um i'm gonna go memorize the quran then i'll be pious no i completely 100 percent see it that one year i'm gonna be reading 10 minutes of quran a day the next year, 15, the next year, 20, the year after that, 25, the year after that, 30, 
until I'm reading an hour a day. And then I'm reading two hours a day. That is how I expect to become somebody that I'm proud to be, if you know what I mean. Uh, somebody who, inshallah, is pious. That's how I plan to do it, through gradual steps. And uh, as I always kind of highlight, this is not the, the path of glory, you know. Re going from reading five minutes of Quran a day to ten, that's not a story to share on a little uh, Instagram clip. <laughs> it's not something to share on a, on a Snapchat story. It's not something you can tweet and people will retweet, retweet it and be really impressed. No one's going to call you inspirational for that. But this is a big deal. It's really a big deal. It's consistency. And it's really, in a way, it could be more ikhlas. It could be more sincere. Uh, because you're doing something that you will get no reward from humans for. Right? And that's part of ikhlas is that you do it wanting the reward from Allah and only Allah. So if you do something where you can get something out of it other than reward from Allah, then there's always a temptation, there's always a chance that you can lose sincerity. But when you're doing something and you can't like you can't get anything out of it except from Allah, then that will really help you to have sincerity. Uh, what, what do I mean by that? Because it's not just money and stuff. Like, if you memorize the book of Allah, you can, in some, you know, many Muslim circles, societies, your rank and your status in the society increases because you've memorized the book of Allah. Um, if you, you know, get married, yeah, um, then again, you, you enjoy that, right? There's enjoyment in that. So the reward is not just from Allah. Uh, if you give charity, you can say, you can feel good about yourself that you uh, contributed to that cause. You know, oh, I helped that guy uh, publish that book, launchgood.com slash better men. Yeah. <laughs> um, so th in many elements of worship, th there is often a way that we can uh, lose sincerity, but increasing your ibadah very slowly, very gradually Inshallah, that's one of those types of ibadah, that types of worship that you can't get that glory out of. You can't get the reward out of it other than from Allah, inshallah, right? So that's what I like about it. So yeah, going back to the whole training thing, think of Ramadan like a, like a metaphor of an athlete, right, who's training. Now, the athlete who's training, you know, including football players and everything, I'm sure they push themselves in training more than what they expect to need on the field, whatever the field is, um, so that when they hit the field, they're ready and they're over ready, they're over prepared. So Ramadan is a short sprint of intensive conditioning so that you do more than you would expect to do normally so that when you leave Ramadan, it's, you find it easy, right? So you're fasting 30 days, for example, so that when you leave Ramadan, Fasting once a week is easy, seems easy, right? You're reading one juz a day, right? 20 pages a day of Quran. So that when you leave Ramadan, reading five pages a day feels easy, right? So that is how I see Ramadan. Now, how do you take advantage of this? You know, we only got half of Ramadan left. The last 10 nights are coming up. I say, put a stake in the ground and say, look, this is going to be a good Ramadan, right? Even if until now you didn't pray any tarawih, you know, you just didn't go to the mosque, be, you know, because of whatever reasons, uh, you know, it's closed or whatever. Um, and you, you didn't really find that motivation, even though I hate that word, motivation to go and pray on your own, your own tarawih. And you kind of read a few juz of Quran at the beginning, but then your energy drained off. I'm saying that's cool, whatever, that's fine, you know. May Allah yeah, and accept that from you, whatever you did. But now, no, now serious. Now you're going to say, look, I'm getting everything out of this Ramadan. I'm getting the objective out of this Ramadan to leave Ramadan as a better person with better habits, better ongoing habits, right, with the will of Allah. And how will you do that? Well, you got to build habits inside of Ramadan. And let's talk about that, right? Because 
for me, like I said, the way I plan to change my behavior to become pious, you know, like I said, is just with habits, purely, purely with habits, purely with habits. Everything can be turned into a habit, right? Even if you want to <clears throat> build a masjid, <clears throat> that can be done through habits. How? I'm going to raise 10 pounds a day, or I'm going to contribute my, from my own salary, 10 pounds a day. Whatever it is, I'm going to go uh, stand outside the masjid and fundraise uh, 10 minutes a day after dhuhr. All these are habits, and they build up to big events like building a mosque, right? And they build up to you becoming the person you want to be, becoming the, you know, Abd al-Rahman, becoming the, yeah, the, 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 the muttaqi, becoming the muhsin, yeah? So how do, we, how do we build habits? Of course, I've done a webinar on this or, or a live stream on YouTube. I did it. Uh, probably third day of Ramadan, I did it a bit later than I should have. But that's the plan I've been following. So let me run you through how you do it. And you're going to want to do this if you're serious about uh, getting the most out of Ramadan, saving your failed Ramadan, if that's how you're seeing it, or giving a boost to your existing Ramadan. And why do I make plans and frameworks and all this? Because motivation is not enough. Motivation comes and goes. Motivation is like desires. When you just feel like it, you do it. When you don't feel like it, you don't do it. That's not how you get to Jannah. You get to Jannah through discipline. And to discipline, you need, you need planning. And planning basically helps you. Planning is a shortcut. Planning is uh, making things easy that were harder. You're making them easy, right? So... Um, how do I do it? So you, like I said, if you're serious about seeing a change in your Ramadan so far, having a great finished Ramadan, because like the Prophet ﷺ said, in a paraphrased hadith that I'm also translating, <laughs> uh, I think, uh, actually, I think that I know the hadith. It's, it's like, in al-a'mala bil khawatim. It's okay, that is Arabic, but that is paraphrasing. The deeds are judged by their end, the end. So the end of Ramadan. However you end Ramadan, that's what your Ramadan will be judged by, right? So let's finish on that high note, yeah? When I say finish, I'm talking about the last two weeks, right? Basically the last half of it, right? Let's start now. Let's start now, whenever you're listening to this. Um, so how do we build habits? What I do is I have three steps, basically. The first step is... I highlight the times that I'm available. The times I'm not working, I'm not studying, I'm not cooking, I'm not sleeping. What are those pockets of time I have? And they might be sometimes half an hour pockets um, or they might be three hour pockets. I know I've got uh, like a two hour pocket. I, I think I have multiple two hour pockets. Um, so identify those and just write them on a piece of paper. So for example, for me, it's like, okay, from Fajr until when I sleep at like 8 a.m., that's a pocket. Now I will be doing some work there, but I can fit some ibad in there. Okay, so that's one pocket. Another pocket might be between Asr and Maghrib. Uh, but in that time, realistically, I'm not going to get too much work done. Uh, but let's let me try and do ibad there. Some good chunk of time there. Um, and then I've also got yes, a night time. So between Maghrib and Aisha, or between Aisha and when I go to sleep. Actually, yeah, between Aisha and when I go to sleep, that's another pocket. So what are your pockets based on your time zone, your Maghrib times, your Fajr times, all of that? What are your pockets of time when you can do Ibadah? The next step is I list the Ibadat that I might want to do. These are Ibadat that you might know just from just general experience, general hearing things uh, that are important to Allah, that Allah rewards and Allah values. All right. And a link to the Quran, of course, because it's the month of the Quran. Right, it's the month of the Quran. So these ibadat are simple, right? Uh, the, all the listed stuff, giving charity, being good to your parents, helping your parents out, taking a burden off your parents, like if your mom is cooking, for example, um, going shopping for your dad instead of him having to go, etc. Um, giving charity, uh, praying extra salawat. So praying salah, um, the sunnah salah after your um, obligatory ones, Praying your tarawih as well, um, praying you know salat al duha, these kind of things. Um, reading the Quran, so reading cover to cover, um, revising Quran you've memorized, 
improving your tajweed, either with a teacher, with a with a sibling, whatever, improving your tajweed, uh, learning new surahs, memorizing new surahs, um, reading tafsir of Quran. These are all things related to Quran. Uh, just listening to Quran or listen to Quran while reading, read along. Yeah, if you're not you're not comfortable with reading. Um, read a translation, read a translation of a tafsir. All of these are acts of ibadah, very good for Ramadan because the month of the Quran. And in the end, the Quran is kind of everything when it comes to habits. It's the mother of habits, is to have some habit uh, linked to Quran, okay? Uh, and I'm not going to list all the different things. It's for you to think what is good that I can do, that I know is good, I know Allah really rewards, Allah mentions in the Quran, etc. Uh, what do I want to do? And especially you want to think here, what do I want to continue after Ramadan? That would be like bonus points for that if you're thinking in that sense, yeah? And then the third step is when you put these things together and you kind of create these like goal sentences, if you like, a goal phrase, which is something like this. Uh, example, I read one juz of Quran every day after Fajr. Okay, so we've got all the important elements there. Uh, what you do, so I read, and then the amount, one juz. I read one juz of Quran, okay, so it's what you're doing and how much you're doing. Every day, so when? After Fajr, when exactly? And that is an example of a goal phrase, and it has all the ingredients of good goal setting. It's specific, it's based on a time, and it should. when it comes to the time that you're doing it, you should link it to an existing habit. So for example, you're in the habit of praying a share, well then bolt onto that praying tarawih. And if tarawih is already something easy and you're doing it every day, then bolt onto tarawih, something after tarawih, like reading a couple of pages of tafsir or whatever, right? Um, uh, let me think of another example of uh, bolting onto a habit. So you read, uh, sorry, you pray Fajr, right? So after you pray Fajr, bolt onto that, after that, reading your juz of Quran. Yeah. Um, you already pray Asr, so bolt onto Asr, going to uh, cook. Okay. Going to cook instead of your mom having to cook, for example. And listen to something while you're cooking as well, something uh, that's going to push you to do more for, for Allah. So that is how you do a phrase, a, a goal setting phrase. Okay, let me think of another example. I give, think of it like this I give 1% of my net worth every day, every day of the last 10 days after Tarawih. Yeah. Right, and that would require you, of course, to calculate one percent of your net worth. So you're not. The idea of the goals as well is to remove any thinking out of it. Like you know what you're doing exactly, when you're doing it exactly, and so you just go and do it. All right. So one percent maybe is not a good good one actually. I would improve that by saying, okay, what is my net worth? Okay, what's one percent? Okay, so it's that. So every day I'm gonna give, you know, a hundred pounds. Uh, and you've said where, you've said when you're gonna do it after Tarawih every day of the last 10 days. The only thing missing is where are you going to give the money to? And that's, why, that's where um, I would create a spreadsheet before the last 10 days come. I would create a spreadsheet um, which has all the charities that you want to give to and links to donate. So it's a very simple process of just clicking and donating, clicking and donating and have your uh, you know, debit card on hand. Okay, uh, I will actually be releasing a video on Sira Master's channel very soon. It's probably going to be, yeah, in the next few days, next day or so, um, for a link to my spreadsheet, right, with some recommended charities that I like. But you can make your own spreadsheet. Um, so, yeah, I've just shown you a kind of a not an ideal goal setting phrase, and I improved it, right, because I realized the 1% thing wasn't, it requires calculation. So, let me do that work ahead of time. And then also, it, uh, I realized, okay, where am I going to donate to? So you need to create that ahead of time. So the whole point of the goal, the, the goal phrase is to have everything laid out. You know exactly what you're going to do, where you're going to do it, what you're going to do, all of that is clear, right? And, you know, to be honest with you, a lot of the time, it's good to you know, set a goal or two for Ramadan with, uh, 
a sibling, you know, to do a goal alongside a sibling or something. But uh, a lot of the time, if their discipline wanes and yours doesn't, then they might take you down with them, right? So just keep that in mind. But maybe do just one of your goals uh, with someone else or with family and whatever. Um, okay, so that's it pretty much. That is it. Uh, how you set goals, how you're going to turn this Ramadan around if it's not going too well. And then at the end of Ramadan, you're going to be like, yes, I did that every day. I did that every day. That I did that every day. And, you know, often people ask, uh, how many of these goals should I do? It depends how experienced you are in setting goals and achieving them. If it's the first time you do Ramadan like this, you might have one, two goals. If it's the second, you might have two, three, or four. Um, but the maximum I would go with is like six. Um, at least that's my experience level anyway. Or maybe in a few years, I'll be saying, yeah, you can go up to seven or eight, maybe. Or maybe if you're like completely on holiday or something. But even then, I feel like uh, if all of these eight habits are brand new habits uh, and you're going quite intense with them, then no, 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 too much, too much. If you're new to this, then yeah, it's like one, one or two habits. And it's just all about consistency. And now when Ramadan ends, you know, hopefully you've done it all. You've done every day successfully and follow the rule that I got from, uh, I think it's from that book, Atomic Habits, James Clear, that never let yourself miss more than one day. So if you miss one day of reading your Quran, forgive yourself and just say, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. But never let it go more than one day in a row of missing it. Okay. And what I find in the last 10 days is I can ramp things up. And so if I'm one, two just behind, I can catch up. Right, as long as I'm still alive by then, may Allah give us a good ending. So that's the idea of goal setting. Uh, I, I've used this technique, by the way, for years and years five years, six years, something like that. And that's when my Ramadan started getting good. I started consistently meeting my goals and having good Ramadan, thinking that this is a very limited time one month per year. And I feel like, yeah, I'm making, I'm making a good use of it. And I want you, I want the same for you. I want you to feel the same. So finally, what do we do after Ramadan? Well, I just realized actually I'm doing a live stream on my YouTube channel, Sira Masters, something like the 26th of Ramadan, I think, or 28th or something like that. It's not on an odd night. I know that. And um, so if you, if you um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, I think you should see that there's like a live stream in the future scheduled for the future and you could hit like the bell icon and you'll you know, get the notification and the reminder or something. Um, but basically what I'm doing on that live stream is how to turn your Ramadan habits into everyday habits after Ramadan, right? So we'll be doing that together. Of course, the short version of it is that you're going to take the habit, for example, of reading one juz a day, which is 20 pages approximately. Um, you're going to turn that into not one just a day reading, but 10 minutes a day reading. And you're going to say, that's my goal. That's, that's what I'm going to be consistent with this year or this next six months. I like to do six month goals. Um, and that's what we're going to build together. So if I were you, I would attend that if you're serious. But the first thing is to build your own goals. Remember the three steps. I'll, I'll leave you with this. The three steps to building good goals, solid goals for your Ramadan. And please, you know, do email us, um, letting us know if this helped and if you implemented it. You know, at the end of Ramadan for an aid present, let me know if this went well, if you implemented it. So step one is identify the times in which you can realistically do a better. And you might not fill all of these times, by the way, but just become aware of what, what time slots you have available. Next is list some ibadat that you're interested in. And again, this is a brainstorm. So just because you write it down doesn't mean you have to commit to doing it. You just write it all down so it's all laid out there for you to pick from, pick and mix style, right? And then the third step is to form sentences. Set goals for Ramadan by forming a goal sentence. How do you form a goal sentence? Well, you say, I, and I like to write it in the present tense. So I read, um, one juz of Quran, right? So what you do and be specific about what you're doing, not just I study Arabic. No, I will cover two pages of this Arabic book. You get it. That's how specific you have to be. I will cover two pages of this Arabic book, whatever it's called, 
Um, and then you need a time which is linked to an existing habit. So, right. So every day, so a lot, most of these habits you should be doing every day because it helps you like get into the routine of it every day. You know, after I pray Fajr, after I pray Asr, uh, after I, you know, wake up, if you wake up at the same time every day. Okay. So that's how you do it. The three, the third step is to create those goals. Like I said, if you're new to this kind of thing, do like one or two goals for this Ramadan. And then you could always have bonus things, which when you just feel like it, you do. So your two, two goals might be read one juz of Quran every day and pray, tar uh, pray Tarawih every day. That might be your thing. But then when some days you're going to feel like it, you're going to have the energy. You're going to say, look, I want to read the Sira, you know, sealed nectar or whatever. I want to listen to this lecture. I want to go through this series on whatever, Aqidah, whatever. So... The, you could always throw bonuses, but this is the very minimum foundation. These goals we're setting is the minimum. We cannot fail at these. Yeah. And that is how, alhamdulillah, I've had, uh, I would say, it's pretty good Ramadans. Um, last few years, you know, last five, six years. This Ramadan, I haven't increased my goals from last Ramadan. Um, I might have slightly decreased. I think it's the same. And that's because I'm maintaining out here because it's my first Ramadan with a, with a baby, with a child. So it's a little bit trickier, a little bit trickier. But alhamdulillah, same goals as last year pretty much. And alhamdulillah, abdul alameen. So yeah, this is the Mind Heist podcast. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, go to mindheistpodcast.com. And from there, you can find out our email address. And you can also contact us, ask a question or make a comment anonymously on the link we have there for Curious Cat. Uh, I remind you that in the description of this podcast, whether it's on YouTube in the description or in the actual podcast description, there will be a link uh, to help uh, Muhammad out with his, um, help his family, Yanni, with the, their needs. And you can also pre-order my book um, or just contribute to the whole campaign um, which is launchgood.com slash better men. And again, I'll put that link in the description as well. Um, so yeah, any contributions from the Mind Heist squad, the Mind Heist team, the Mind Heist, uh, what's like a Arabic version? The Mind Heist Kabila tribe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any contributions really, really uh, will help. And the, the amount of money, at least I'm trying to raise, it's not a huge amount of money. So if just like 10, 20 more of you contribute, that will make a big difference, right? Um, and I'm definitely going to use your money well with that campaign. So yeah, thanks for listening. I hope this really helped you. I know, and really, really don't just write off your Ramadan, you know, oh, you know, it's been over halfway through Ramadan now. Just, I am, I suck, basically. I suck, just forget. No, 10 days of Ramadan with consistency makes a big deal. Five days, the last five days, go hard last five days. That might be the reason that Allah saves you from the hellfire. You never know. You never, even the last day. Because, you know, you know the, the actions are judged by their, the endings, right? So may Allah accept from us in Ramadan, from, from you and from me. And uh, have a great Eid. If I don't really, I think I will, that will definitely release another episode by then. Hopefully with, with Muhammad, but we, I, I can't confirm. And uh, yeah, thanks for, for your time and attention as usual. Mindheistpodcast.com, that is the domain. That is the website uh, for your questions and comments. Um, yes, thank you everyone for listening. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha la anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.